In the last segment, I was talking briefly about how the original uh, thread cutting attachment actually cuts the full V in one shot, meaning it cuts both sides of the angle, which isn't necessarily ideal uh, when thread cutting, but for what we have here, it works well enough that you can get by with that. But we have come up with a way with help from some of our uh, customer tips of actually being able to use our compound, uh, our angled compound, to actually set your 60 degree so you actually only do cut uh, one edge of the thread uh, while you're threading and your threads come out that much better. There's a few things you have to take into account. Um, you'll have to get some extra equipment uh, to do this. And the first, first and foremost, the two things is the 200 tooth gears, uh, the one that's on the headstock and your first primary gear in your gear train, have to be replaced with larger gears. And we either have the, the 127 or we have the 150. Now the 127s will work and they're obviously cheaper than the 150s and you actually get one of the 127s in the, the stock kit because that's used for uh, the metric conversions and back and forth. So we're going to go with the 127s and I'll show you how to do that. Also you'll obviously need uh, a headstock riser block. Uh, you'll need the compound of course and either you can use the stock um, tool post with the thread cutting uh, tool in it or move up to the uh, quick change tool post which I'll use the quick change tool post just to demonstrate how it's used. And with that we'll get started. And you basically just uh, remove everything pretty much from the way it was. You're going to be using the same gears except for the uh, the 100s are going to be replaced. You take off your lead screw gear and that allows you to take off the gear train assembly and just slide off the 100 tooth and replace it with the open 127. Now here's where it gets a little trickier here is you have to do some switching around. You take the 20 off and you have to pull the little dowel pin out with a pair of pliers just like that and then it slides right out. Take the 127, slip the washer over it and slide the little dowel pin right in the hole and replace the 20 tooth gear and you're set to go. And then we just go back on once we put the headstock riser block in. And again, you have to make sure you get it where it's snug enough, but it still rotates nice and smooth in both directions. Replace your lead screw gear. And then reset your your main idler gear. We 
Make sure that drops into the little slot on the hand wheel and lock it down. Now one thing I didn't mention before that's not a bad idea is to put just a little bit of 3-in-1 oil on your gear train to make life a little bit easier for the gears. And I mean just literally a drop on the gears is really all you need. Work it in a little bit. And that's all set to go. Now we get to the, the compound and it just goes on just like the instructions, the instructions say. You'll probably want to bring it all the way flush with the edge where the red plate is flush with the back edge of your um, cross slide. And again with this, just snug it down. You don't have to uh, go gorilla reefing on it. It doesn't take much. And then here, we want to set it to your 60 degrees. You just line up the pin or the uh, tick mark on the 60 degree. and lock down your compound. And what this emulates is if you hold your your tool, your uh, uh, threading tool up here, the angle, they're the same now. So that when you feed this forward, you're feeding it right along the edge of your cutting tool. And again with this, you want to keep your tool absolutely perpendicular to your workpiece. And I would zero this out, and I'll explain why in a minute. And like I said in the last segment, I went ahead and uh, chucked up and uh, did the preliminary work on a piece of mild steel. So we'll be using mild steel. And just like before, take your Sharpie marker. and mark it up all black. Now with your compound set on zero, bring the cross slide in and touch off your, your work piece as you're turning. There she touched. Zero your cross slide. Engage your drive shaft and just ever so slightly advance your compound a little bit and do a preliminary cut. I only advanced it maybe a half a thousand, so it may not be all the way around. Okay, now. Do not back out the cross slide when you're doing it this way, or excuse me, the compound, you back out the cross slide. Because they're, they're, uh, the cross slide, you will always return back to zero, and you will then just advance. You don't have to remember where, where you left off. So we'll back the cross slide off, reverse it.
advance this back to zero. And let's check our, our handy tread, thread gauge. And we're still at 24. From there, we'll just go ahead and thread like normal on here. And that's all you need to do. Um, we'll do a few here. Beans and smiled steel, it will take a bit longer than the brass. And I highly recommend using cutting fluid. But this method is way easier on your tools and your equipment than the traditional method. And with that, that pretty much wraps it up. Uh, I'm not going to go ahead and finish this because this will this will take a while, and I don't have any cutting fluid uh, in the studio with me. Um, but this gives you a basic rundown on how to set up the machine uh, for both standard thread cutting and using the compound. Um, we have a, a wonderful tech support line if you have questions when you're uh, when you're doing your threading. But this should get you uh, rolling out of the out of the box and uh, get you cutting threads. Uh, now our, our system will cut threads anywhere from uh, I believe it's four threads per inch, uh, five threads per inch all the way up to 80 threads per inch in standard and in metric 0.25 millimeter all the way up to two millimeter. Now keep in account that the standard thread machine, the standard uh, uh, SAE th um, lead screw machine uh, will do all of the metric threads. However, the metric machine will only do up to 40 threads per inch in standard threads. And that's just the dynamics of the one millimeter pitch and the way the gearing works. So keep that in mind and also make sure that if you have a metric lathe, you follow the notes in the guide. Uh, otherwise, your, your threads just aren't going to come out. You have to change some gears around to go from one direction to the other or vice versa. Keep that in mind. But all the directions and uh, information you need is in this. Um, and on that note, take care.